Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. I thought we might revisit a little kit that I put together a while ago. Um, I'll put a link down below if I can find the video. And it was called a Ghostwriter, and I believe this was an Elector gadget. You can see it came with quite nice laser cut plastics and we we would have assembled that in the video it's a it is quite a while now um and it has a real-time clock on it i can see in there and a battery and i thought let's pair it up and see if it one remembers the time that would be handy and two if it actually works now i can't remember the voltage and the whatnots of it but it's on an arduino and let's see if the plug plugs in which I'm guessing is a five volt. So I'm gonna set my bench power supply, <laughs> which was set to nine. Let's set it down to five. And if it works, great. If not, I'm gonna go dig out the specs on the Arduino and see exactly what we should be giving it. But five volts probably safe. We'll plug that in. And I can see it did have a sensor on it. And I think the idea was that when you would wave your hand, it would do the writing, something like that. Now there's a button. Oh, let's turn it on. Oh, I can definitely hear it. Let's turn the light off. So we've already got a little bit of a green glow happening here. And I can certainly hear it buzzing. If you listen there, it's buzzing, but it's not really using up uh, any current right now. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so it doesn't seem to like that at all. Let me dig up the specs of the Arduino and then we'll see. So apparently these Arduino boards can operate from 6 to 20 volts and if you supply less than 7 it won't even be able to, to manage its 5 volt rail properly. So I'm going to whack it back up here to 7 volts. There you go, 7.1, let's try it now. Ah, that's a bit better isn't it? Right, let's see if it works. There's obviously nothing on the laser right now. I'm going to push, there's a button here on the front, which I can reset. Oh, there we go. Oh, 09, I think it's upside down. 20, 920. I mean, it's, it's, it's an hour fast. That certainly did look about the right time. Now, the weird thing on that, I did expect it to be the other way, so I guess the stand actually was this way with the button on the top. So let's hit that again. Let's have another look. Definitely there's an O. Nine. <laughs> so I think what would be fun for us to do... If, I'm not going to dismantle it, but I'm going to see if we can calibrate it now, because it certainly does not look like it's writing anywhere near where we want it to, be, to write. So I'm going to loosen the screws here on this servo. It's just a little micro servo. Let's pop this off. We can. We can. Look, see, it's totally popped off. And it's almost like a Delta 3D printer, isn't it? You obviously calculating the maths for drawing the the screen in a way that uh, you're not used to so I'm going to knock it off so it looks like it's too low so does that mean that this so if this one's too far right it'll bring it low so maybe this one actually has to be clipped left this is where you can go really wrong can't you by just getting it all messed up perhaps there was a calibration routine on it in the Arduino, you could probably just go onto the serial port and do this. But that seems like it's uh, too easy. Why not just hack it this way? <laughs> or even better, go on the Lector website and actually just get the root calibration routine from the actual instructions. Still, I suspect it's one of those clocks that you're not going to actually use in reality, just owing to the fact that it's so hard to read in the daylight and it's very noisy. Let's give another go. Oh, oh, hello. Look at that. That is actually not too bad. It's really hard. I'm trying to make it a bit darker that you can see it doing its thing. 
<laughs> now, the original um, uh, story, I think, behind this was that somebody did it and it actually had sand in the, a tray and it had a finger and it would just draw something in the sand and I think it would vibrate to flatten it out and then each time it would go through but this is wonderful I mean considering that it's probably a few years since we built this um, I'm glad the battery still works I will pop the lid off it though now that we're here just because I know some of you won't be bothered to really see the previous video and I don't blame you but you might be curious as to what it was actually consisting of so I think as it's only four screws take this off we might as well and this is of course the process you'd have to go through if you wanted to change that battery which is buried deep within its barrels Last screw here and there you have it so you've got a standard Arduino Uno zoom in there underneath you can just about see the board there with its edge connector that's not too interesting you can just get that anywhere but the bit that uh, the elector bit that they've made here you see here Le elector labs this is a real-time clock board undoubtedly and I'm sure a driver for those stepper mode sorry servos and I'm just looking it's interesting because you've got the battery for the clock but I'm not actually seeing the clock. So let's see what we've got here, though. We've got a component here. A 17301578 marked 5 volts. It's a very odd thing, isn't it? It almost looks like a relay. You think, what could that be doing, interestingly? And then you have here a PCF2129AT, which I think is almost certainly the real-time clock chip. Now the servos themselves are actually pulse width modulated. Um, that's something the Arduino could just do directly. So it probably doesn't actually need too much hardware in between. And I do note something here. interestingly. You have this button that we push and it is wired. And that's a bit unusual. It is actually wired to the pins here on this edge connector as is this wire here, which is the one from the laser. So I'm guessing I'm guessing they've uh, reused this circuit board. I don't think it's it's been specifically made for this uh, project because we've also got contacts here, which is an M minus and an M plus, which sounds like it's some sort of motor driver. So maybe this was for you know controlling a radio controlled car or something, um, a, you know, an Arduino auto autonomous vehicle, and uh, it's just been uh, overloaded with this functionality, which is absolutely fine. And then you do have a PIR sensor, which I think is this wire here coming through which is just going into sort of GPIO that the Arduino is going to be using and reacting with and there's a whole bunch of wire in here that I've stuffed down and that's the, the wires off these standard uh, servos that you can just buy for radio control models so yeah cute um, so if you are interested in such a thing have a look at Ghost Writer um, on the Electra website it does have little tangs here for hanging it on the wall, and you can hang it up either way, actually. It does show you can hang it up either way. Very cool. Right, I think I'm just going to put this back together and throw it into the box of shame where I keep all my kits. And uh, please comment down below on what is in your box of shame. Thank you for watching.